class, it just kind of went haywire. So I'm going to start again. But guys, this is Riley Anderson. He is a credit consultant and he is a really good guy. And I was really excited to talk to him. One, because he's going to be talking about something that right now is very important to a lot of people and it could make or break them financially. So we want to make sure that we cover that. And that's one of the things I like to do at Candidly COVID is talk about things that are going to inform people, but also be encouraging. And he is all of that in one. Hey, Riley. Hey, how are you? Good. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. <laughs> well, last time I saw you, we were at your cousin's weddings, one of my best friends on the beach in Panama City, living our best lives. And now we are all stuck inside. <laughs> stuck inside. Uh, I want the beach. I want the sunshine. Yes. I regret, like, I miss being able to sweat on the beach. Right? You you never know how much you miss things until they're right? gone. <laughs> it was rough in the moment, but now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad you're here. And, you know, when I, when I, I'm, I'm so thankful that you responded so quickly to me yeah. asking you to do this because a lot of people would be like, oh, I got to get prepared, but you are already prepared and you're ready to go. So I kind of want to just ask you, tell us what you do, give us some insight, and then we'll just jump right into the conversation. For you guys out there, if you have questions, put them in the chat box. I'll check at like just here um, periodically to see any questions that you guys may have that I can ask Riley and pass them on and we can go from there. All right, cool. Riley, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Yeah. So actually, you know, one of the reasons I, I really wanted to jump on this opportunity quickly is urgency is such a big deal right now in regards to people's finances, uh, especially regarding credit. There's so many things that are shifting in, uh, you know, credit and in the lending industry and all these things going on because of the situation we're in with COVID-19. So, um, you know, I, I some of this information, not sure how relevant it'll it'll be, you know, in a month from now. But right now it's a really, really big deal. So I want to make sure we got it out there. Um, so I'm a credit consultant with a company called White Jacobs and Associates. We do attorney backed credit restoration. Um, so, uh, you know, I would consider it, it's a premier uh, premium service within the credit repair industry. Um, you know, it's, it's no it's no surprise to me that um, people who have interacted with the credit repair industry, many have had very bad experiences. Yes. Uh, so and it's, it's very much because there's a lot of companies that just uh, in in hopes to do the best, end up s severely over promising their abilities. Wow. So, um, with with the way our we're structured here, we actually have our own in house law firm that backs everything we do. So we like to say we actually have actual bite with the bark as far as helping people get stuff off of their credit. So my job here, I'm not the guy who removes the the negative information off of somebody's credit. You know, lucky for them and me, uh, we have a full on investigative research team of very, very experienced professionals who have spent years and years and years studying the ins and outs of the laws and various ways to interact with companies that are reporting on credit. And obviously the law firm backs everything they do. My job, customer service, keeping people connected and providing credit education and knowledge about, hey, how do you become your own um, professional? How do, how do you gain confidence over this is how I run my credit. And I, I know that I can handle keeping it good and, and using it the way I want to. So that's really good. I think we have, you know, I'm, I'm being in real estate. I'm a realtor. So we catch a lot of that. A lot of those questions. I actually had somebody call me um, on yesterday and she was like, I don't know what to do in this. And the first thing I told her to do was make sure she watched today's live because you're yeah. going to be getting a lot of great information. Um, so now what are some of the things that you guys are talking to people about in response to COVID-19, that sort of thing. Yeah. Crisis in, um, life in general. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like really, two, there's two main things I've been talking to people about. Um, one is really just more mindset. And the other okay. is very much specific to um, what do you need to be doing in regards to your credit and your finances? Um, so, you know, you can have all the right tools, but if you're, if you're not running with the right mindset, uh, mm -hmm. It's hard. It's hard to actually carry them out the way they're supposed to be done. It's hard to walk uh, in confidence moving forward. Um, you know, it's it's kind of like I remember my dad teaching me how to hammer nails when I was a little kid. Right. Mm -hmm. And the more confident I became about hammering those nails, the better I was at actually doing it. Yeah. The more nervous I was, the more often I hit my finger. Right. right. So something I've been talking with my clients about is just having a, a mindset of, of courage moving forward. I like there that. Is, 
uh, there's so many people, rightly so even, who are feeling huge anxiety, mm -hmm. fear. And, and when this happens, the natural tendency is this to contract and to pull back, right? And, and to stop doing the things you need to do to build your future because you're so worried about your present. Yeah. Um, and though it's, it's right to be focused on the present, to forsake where you're going because of where you are, that's how we get stuck. Right. And ultimately, that's how we make poor decisions when you base them solely out of fear, right? So true. Um, so, you know, this idea that knowing that the majority of people are contracting in fear, that provides a very unique opportunity for those who choose courage to expand. Yes, I agree with right? that. 100%. So that's, that's something I'm really working on my clients with it from a mindset standpoint is instead of being someone who shrinks, I want you to grow. Instead right. of contracting, I want you to expand. Instead of choosing fear, I want you to choose courage as we move forward. Right. Um, you know, and that's, that's with continuing as you're able to save and keep putting yeah. money into investing, keep putting money into emergency savings the best you can. Um, you know, the, the rich people, the super wealthy who invest in the stock market, they're not freaking out right now in fear. Right. They're excited because everything's on a discount. Right. right. Um, and so kind of working that mentality into my clients. Um, but the other thing as far as from a credit standpoint is, hey, also out of fear, you can make some poor decisions that can impact you for a very long time in regards to your credit. I understand, you know, many of my clients are not working right now. They're hourly and they got shut down and they're like, hey, Riley, what do I do with my funds being limited? And actually on that note, and this is why I love the company that I'm with, uh, we have been working very, very hard to continue serving our clients, even though we are pushing payments out. That's awesome. um, wow. Because the thing is the urgency and the doing it right now is very important, even though a lot of clients are struggling financially. That's so awesome. um, one of those things is, as you're weighing out your bills and your budget, your people are in a situation where they're deciding, okay, which one do I need to pay? Mm -hmm. Which one do I need to take care of? And uh, something a lot of people don't realize is, is something like your mortgage or your car payments or yeah, even like utility bills and things like that. Um, if they get reported to your credit as a 30 day late, right? Because you're trying to handle other things. A single 30 day late could drop your credit score 60 to 120 points. Oh, wow. Can you say that? Can you say that for, for the people in the back and the front? Because yeah. it's so huge that people don't yeah. understand like that one late. Repeat what you just said. <laughs> yeah. A single 30 day late. So you choose that you, you you're not going to pay a certain bill for a period of 30 days and you're behind. So two pay periods go by, right? That one late, you can have nothing else wrong on your credit. That one late can drop your credit scores 60 to 120 points. And we're That's talking it, in regards to how that impacts future loans on interest rates. We're talking so literally ripping hundreds of dollars of extra expendable income out of your budget every single month. That you, you lose that extra money because your interest rates aren't good because the scores dropped. And that's what I'm all about is we are here to give people their buying power back, give them their budget freedom back by making that same home purchase, that same car purchase, that same personal loan, that same insurance coverage, making all of that cheaper so that you have yes. that excess funds in your budget so you can build your future, so you can invest, so you can uh, you know, start that business you've been thinking about or that side hobby that brings you joy and excitement in life, right? It's one of those things um, where I've, I've heard a lot of people say, well, oh gosh, well, I just, you know, I, I missed the boat doing all this beforehand, but I'm doing it now. I think you're yeah. giving some really practical ideas of how they should do that. But I think one of the things that you said, which is huge, is that a lot of people understand that credit is actual buying power, like you said, because these, if you say you have something that you may be paying $115, that's, that's the payment for the month and you miss mm -hmm. that. Now that hundred score drop has cost you more than the interest <laughs> as well as yeah. that actual payment would have ever cost you in the long run. 
So 100%. what are the things that are that practically people who may not have done that now that they need yeah. to do and even maybe talk on like what your service does to how they could help them if they are at a point where they literally have no clue what to do? Yeah. Um, you know, I think this advice really is rooted back in a mindset of, you know, this too shall pass, right? This season yeah. we're in, it's just a season. Mm -hmm. There are going to be future opportunities that come up. So I had, I had plenty of clients that jumped into our program. We worked on their credit, took, you know, 90 to 180 days to get them 100, 150 point increases, but they started last year. Right. So when interest rates dropped at the beginning of all this craziness, they saved tons of money and were able to leverage their their revitalized credit scores. Right. I also had a lot of people call me because interest rates dropped saying, hey, I want to work on my credit now. Yeah. And this is so huge. Fixing credit is not an overnight thing. I was going to say, touch on that, please. <laughs> yeah. So we... With what we have at our disposal here at White Jacobs and Associates, there's nothing more aggressive, nothing more effective, nothing faster because we are uh, we're handcuffed by the loss. Right. So your creditors, the credit bureaus, they have a, a 30 to 45 days before they even have to send you a response. Wow, yeah. There's not a whole lot more that you can do to force them to speed that up. Now, that being said, I, I had people call me right at the front of this whole this situation wanting brand new credit scores overnight to catch those interest rates. And it's difficult, very, very difficult to impossible to actually make happen. Yeah. So that being said, okay, have I missed the boat? Is it too late for me to work on my credit? Absolutely not. For two reasons. One, because there's going to be a new awesome wave in the future. Right. I don't know when it's going to be, but it's going to happen. Right. So the question is, are you going to be ready? Are you going to be prepared when it shows up? Not if it shows up. Right. Right. So then it's like, okay, well, when do I start working on my credit? My answer is always as soon as possible, yeah. but there's an extra caveat to that for having, having it worked on right now yeah. because of the uh, stay at home orders, the shelter in place orders. Um, normally we see a spike in our deletion rate success during quarter four of the year, right? Yeah. During the holidays. Yeah. Because the companies we're auditing are short staffed. Because people are on vacation. Wow. Right now, they're more understaffed than they've ever been because of what's happening. So we're seeing credit reports coming back with blanket deletions, everything gone with things that one of the most important things for my job as a credit consultant is to pro provide reasonable expectations. Right. Credit repair is not a magic wand that makes all the bad things yeah. go away. Yes. Um, so I, I have to have that. That real straightforward conversation with my client saying, hey, you know, here's here's item X. There's a there's a, a high likelihood that one doesn't come off. Right. But here's 10 other things that we're very confident we're going to get. OK. Things that I would tell clients there's no chance are deleting, 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 deleting. Yes. Wow. Because of the situation we're in. Um, so I mean, now I even, time to jump in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Try absolutely. Taking care of that. Hundred percent. So it's like capitalize on, and this is where okay, am I going to choose fear? Or right. Am I going to choose courage? Because I'm thinking about my future. Right. Do you want to capitalize on building the future better than you normally could right now, as you hope for the next time you're going to want to use your credit? I mean, I had a I have a buddy that went through our program, started in January, and actually after uh, about sixty days. We got full deletions on his credit report. Yeah. He was up 100, uh, 100 some odd points and he refinanced his house. He's saving $300 a month on his mortgage. That's amazing. That's so amazing. imagine you were given $300 extra dollars a month that you could budget. This is the perfect time to need that. Oh, for sure. Right? For sure. I think, too, um, one of the things that you kind of you're like even talking about your buddy is that we're looking at people where they may have, we would have never saw this coming, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Coming. And I think, you know, like, like you said, your buddy, he started way back when, or started at the beginning of the year. And now look where he is. Even if you don't know what the chances are for everything, yeah. you're still going to be so much better if you actually start. And I think that has a lot to do with what you said about mindset. I also like that you said, cause I hear a lot of people go, Oh, well, I was going to get with this credit person and they told me, for $500, I could get my credit cleared up in 30 days. And I'm like, 
that just sounds impossible. I know that to be impossible. And then I talked to you and that was kind of like, you know, I get to hear from you the realistic thing. And I think that's a big thing for everybody out there is to one, be if you're going to work with somebody, a credit consultant, you need to make sure that they are somebody who's reputable and that they're telling you the truth. I think what you said, yeah. Riley, about giving people the honest perspective about where they are is huge. Mm -hmm. And that's how we build trust in both of our businesses is giving you the yeah. good, the bad, the ugly, and then the solution of what we can do. Um, and that's um, also speak. Can you speak to a little bit too about how like right now there, I I know that we've even had it recently where people have tried to do add things on our, like use our credit. Um, but thankfully uh -huh. things like LifeLock, can you talk to that a little bit? Cause I don't know if people particularly watch their credit like they should. Yeah. Oh man. I, I think actually just, um, I just posted this on my LinkedIn today, just this idea that, Hey, if you, if you don't consider your credit, as an integral part of your finances. If you don't look at your credit at least once a month, and if mm. you don't think about improving your credit the same way you think about improving your personal income, you are not thinking about credit appropriately. Okay. So this idea that you need to, as it, it is a, it, at the way finances work in our country at this point in regards to credit, it is an adult mature thing to keep tabs on your credit score right. and your credit health. The the second most common federal offense is identity theft behind yeah. drug trafficking. So, you know, millions of Americans struggle with this problem of things being stolen. So one, one of the thing is, it, you know, find, find um, a subscription that follows your credit and updates you. Yeah. The one that I usually recommend to people is called Identity IQ. Oh. Um, and I can I can send a I can send a one dollar trial link to you that if yeah. you want to pass it up Absolutely. to people. Absolutely, we'll put it in um, the comments so everybody can use that link. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, it the one dollar trial is seven days for you to kind of get in and get a feel for how it's laid out and all that stuff. But what it does is they do both credit monitoring and identity theft protection. Okay. So you'll get a fresh credit report once a month with new scores once a month. It alerts you if somebody's using your identity uh, on the dark web, anywhere on the internet. Yeah. And then if your identity is stolen and there's you know financial damage that's done to you, they have a million dollars of insurance coverage for anything that might happen. Oh, wow. That's so, awesome. yeah. So just having something, you know, it's not it's not one I recommend, but credit right. karma, credit karma at least makes you think about it. Can you now, can we talk about that? I mean, can we talk about these? Can you give us a little? I mean, do do you know how many times as realtors we hear about credit karma and credit sesame, and people get the wrong idea and then they go in and they go talk to a lender and they find out and they're devastated. Yes, because oftentimes it didn't go the way that. They, they hoped it would. Yeah. Without making it too boring, um, <laughs> there's really two, there's two <laughs> main camps. Yeah. <laughs> there's two main camps of, we'll call them algorithms, right, that generate a credit score. So we're talking about a computer brain that's reading the information on your credit report and mm -hmm. spitting out a score on the end. Okay. So you have Vantage and you have FICO. Okay. FICO is what the mortgage company is using and almost every single time comes in 30, 40, I've seen 60 points lower than what Vantage does. That, and even, even in the two camps, there's 30 some odd different versions of either of those within their own umbrellas. Um, the problem with Credit Karma is they, I, what I appreciate is at least their marketing has made people aware that credit's important. Right. Okay. I thank you, Credit Karma, for doing that. The problem is they are a credit card selling machine. Right. It's like what? What did your mom tell you? You get in. You get for free in life. Nothing. <laughs> why, yeah. So why is Credit Karma free? Because what right. you're getting is is slim to nothing in value. I mean, it's designed to, and they can actually manipulate it in the background, which is why it's so. I just had problems with it is it's yeah. designed to notify you, notify you, notify you about credit changing and this and that and, and spike the endorphins and the fear and the excitement mm -hmm. in your body and then show you a credit card ad and say that this is going to make it better. Right. And that's how they make their money. So, you know, get, get an actual 
subscription credit monitoring site, you know, spend the identity IQ. If you keep it, it's 28 bucks a month, wow. $28 a month to keep an eye on something that could cost you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars per month is worth looking at. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. I think that's the, probably the part that's really huge. I was seeing here um, some of the comments that we have. So yeah. I'm going to go to them. Um, and we were talking, Oh, Hey, your uncle said, hi. <laughs> Hey, what's up? <laughs> so yeah, it's it's so funny. And then we had somebody say, "Hey, they heard something." It was probably earlier in our conversation, um, way back. Well, hey, Megan, um, she said that is crazy. I'm running to pay all my bills, <laughs> so it was probably in the portion we're talking through. about. Don't be yeah. late. <laughs> so that and that being said, there's a difference between a collection, a bill, a charge off, right? So. Um, and I can't tell people not to pay their bills, you know, legal thing. Right. I can't tell you what to do. What I can tell you is what's going to happen. Uh, yeah. Pay your bills. If it's a bill, something you just owe. Yeah. If you have a collection, paying collections will drop your credit score. Oh, gosh. That happened to me after college. I had one and I had no idea that I had it. Um, yeah. and, well, partly because it was I got sued for something and then I didn't get sued for it. But it was really weird. From a car accident that I was in that I didn't cause. Yeah. I had a, yeah. it was crazy, but it was on there and I had to work to get it off. But I didn't know that it was even on there because back then, you know, I was in college. I wasn't doing the things that you're supposed to check all the time, you know. Right. Um, but I had to work to get it off. But initially I was going to go pay it. And then the attorney was like, you don't even owe this. <laughs> but if I had paid it, he told me that my score would have yeah. been dramatically yeah. dropped. But I had no clue. I had like, <clears throat> I mean, credit health is credit wealth <laughs> in so many yeah. ways. <laughs> like if we the anxiety of of not being in a good situation, I feel like financial stuff causes people so much anxiety. And and if we can in any way by having this conversation alleviate that, that's exactly what I want to do. Yeah. Cause like even um you know, and, and it's it's going to be different lender to lender, but some things that have just recently changed because of everything happening. Um, all, you know, government backed mortgages, whether we're talking first time home buyer, FHA mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, even, even VA loans. It is lender to lender, but a lot of lenders have been uh, strongly encouraged or even forced to up the credit score requirement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From what used to be the rock bottom requirement was 580. Yeah. Right. Now, a lot of people are requiring a 680. Yes. So we're talking about a hundred points. A couple of weeks ago, and he was telling us that, and I, we were blown away because people kind of waited. We're waiting; they yeah. get greedy, and we're like, "Oh, well, the next day the rate's going to be a little bit less." And then the score increased, and it was like yeah. so many people that thought they were going to be buying homes are now not buying homes. Absolutely. So the question is, okay, do do I want to come in thinking I'm going to have just enough to get what I'm trying to do? Yeah. Or do you want to excel in the area of credit and have the best credit score possible? and learn how to continue to maintain and grow that even beyond a credit restoration program. You know, yeah. like we are the, we are the launch pad for you regaining control yeah. over your credit yeah. so that you can be in charge of how it works. I like right. It. And not feel like you're stumbling around through a maze, just trying to figure it out. Um, so that's the thing is, and so even chase, so chase is announcing that they're going to up their requirements to a 700 credit score for mortgages. Wow. So there's a lot of people who were dancing around in the 600s thinking, you know, I, I don't need the best interest rate possible. I just want to get it good enough to where I can get approved and just get what I want. Hey, you know what? I understand that. My job is to help you get to your goal uh, as much as I want to encourage you to excel and do the very best you can because it's going to save you money. Well, now those those people, just like you said, they thought they were about to get a house and now they're not. Yeah. So. I think it's so funny, like when I probably probably maybe like 10 years ago is when I really decided to because I wasn't getting the information that I needed. And I started like really going, OK, well, I need to if I if, if there's not as readily available people like you as there yeah. were 10 years ago. Now we have information and people like you that we can go to and talk to you about credit. But I remember digging and it was such a maze because like you said about like paying off collections, I had no idea that would have dropped my score dramatically, but I was about yeah. to experience it. You know what I mean? And it would have been devastating. Right. I would have thought I was doing the right thing because my mindset was yeah. like, I don't care if I feel it's right. I want, don't want it on my credit. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Right. I just didn't want it on my credit. But it's like things like that, that we don't realize. I think it's, but it has changed my life being 
in charge of my credit, checking it, making sure I know what's happening, like on the dark web with my credit. But I think I like the, the what you talked about. I'm going to try to get that. But I, I'm so appreciative of you for always just being very honest yeah. and straightforward with people because that's what we need right now. And right now, people like you are helping people for when they get out of this. Um, yes. Being able to maintain. Can you talk right. about that on just a little bit on touch of some of the things? Because I've had people ask, what do they do to maintain their credit when they're mm -hmm. not working? Is there some something that they can do uh, to make this less traumatic, if you will? Absolutely. Not Absolutely. Um, you know, the thing is. So many lenders have really stepped up in regards to providing opportunities and um, resources so that people don't fall behind on bills, right? right? So, um, you know, whoever you have borrowed money from, whether you, whether it is a home loan or a car loan or a personal loan, or it's your credit cards or whatever, if you are, um, especially if you're not working because, because of all this, call up the people you have borrowed money from and ask them what is available for me to make it through this period of time. Because, yeah. uh, there, there are lenders who are, basically taking like the next three or four months of payments and just okay. flipping them to the back end of your loan. So you okay. can go four months, no payments, and then pick it right back up. Now okay. you want to be super, super clear with your lender about how they are going to restructure your loan okay. because some, many of them, like I said, are just flipping it to the back end. So literally you're, you're, you're on a pause, but you get to keep the house or the car or whatever, and you're just going to pay that later at the end. Others have what's called a balloon uh, repayment plan where you might go four months of not needing to pay anything. But then on that fifth month, they're going to want all four months plus the fifth month of, of rent or whatever. So you want to be super, super clear how they're going to restructure that. Okay. And so you can be you know, financially prepared to handle whatever that looks like. But I mean, they're, they're moving payments on houses and cars. They are um, freezing, oh, freezing interest, interest growth. Yeah. All kinds of things. Well, student loans. I, I I've, everything. I've heard that as well. And so I think everybody out there, if you are really at a loss for what to do, because maybe like you're like, you know, you're gripped by fear right now, but we're trying to help you not be gripped by fear. Get out there and just take charge, run head forward and make sure that you're doing some of these things. Mainly, like Riley said, if you're having trouble, he gave us some really good tips. Call these companies and talk to them yeah. and see what solutions are out there, but make sure that you understand them. So Riley, so now this is the part of the show where we kind of find out what people have been doing in quarantine and social distancing. So <laughs> um, now I know that you're I know that you're a fit guy. So what kind of home fitness things? We're gonna have your cousin on the show, by the way. I told yes, you yes, you're gonna be on the show. Yeah, he's a trainer and um, yeah. a really good trainer. So I told him he has to be on the show to show us mm -hmm. what we do inside. But what what have you been doing to work out? Oh man. Um, so I have, um, actually I, my roommate has one of those pull-up bars that you can hang in the door yeah. frame. So <laughs> doing pull-ups and push-ups and we have some, you know, some light, lighter dumbbells, um, you know, 15s, 20s and 30s that we're trying to figure out various, you know, rows and curls and all just anything we think of. Um, and we've been doing a lot like uh, leg kind of stuff out in our yeah. parking garage with lunges and, uh, but actually, so <laughs> yeah right um, what's so funny though is so here at white jacobs about basically about 10 of us have decided to continue working from the office and i'm i live 10 minutes away so it's office yeah. apartment office apartment um but for those of us here just kind of keep our energy up and then we have some guys who like to work out here yeah. we've been doing challenges where we um like we're doing push-ups every hour on like get 20 push-ups every hour on the hour all through the day um my buddy brought in his, his like adjustable Bowflex dumbbells. Oh my God. <laughs> we've got like, like cartons of copy paper, printer paper that we've like made benches and chairs with. And uh, it's a bunch of crazy <laughs> office meatheads is the problem. So that we're like doing, hilarious. we're doing like shoulder press and all this stuff. Just trying, <laughs> just trying to stay active and, and make it fun and light. So have you had a lot of Zoom calls? Cause that seems to be the thing that everybody's doing. Oh, man. Calls. <laughs> Oh gosh, I um. Hopefully, this doesn't make me sound goofy, but I don't know. It was I want to say it was Nickelodeon or Disney had a had a cartoon called Zoom. Yes, yes. Oh so gosh, I, I saw this. 
I saw this video that it basically said like everybody in 2020 and then played the intro theme song for Zoom because it's like, <laughs> it's funny. I wish I had a bot stock at Zoom. Uh, but yeah, just tons of them. I actually have a, a networking breakfast every Thursday morning of like 65 of us all jumping on Zoom. And uh, it's, um, it's, you know, it's, it's the best we can do right now. Right. Where you you definitely miss people, and I know a lot of my small my church stuff is is through Zoom right now. Um, but I'm I'm excited to see more Zoom fails with the internet. <laughs> with people who forgot that they're being video recorded. Those are my favorite. Those are my um, favorite. You gotta you gotta keep out an eye for those, and you have to let me know about them because I yeah. like. Here is it bad that I'm like waiting for people to mess up? Oh, man. <laughs> you know. Thank you, Internet, for all you do for us. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's some of the best moments that I've seen. So how did you spend your Easter? Because I know that your family is really close. My family is really close. And we did. This is like yeah. usually my house. And so that was very weird, you know, like not being at with my church family and then having our big dinner at our big table. I'm sorry about the dinging. It's my friends. Oh, yeah. I it, I usually turn it off, but we, we had to switch computers last minute. But what did you do for Easter? <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, just like you said, me and my family, relationally very close, geographically very far. Right. So yeah. mom and dad are in St. Louis, um, uh, along with some, you know, several aunts and uncles and cousins. And my brother lives in North Carolina. So um, it was weird not getting to be with them. I, I have a who I call my Texas family. Um, yeah. Very you know, super close with them. Uh, they invited me over and we did kind of brunch and mimosas and omelets. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> ended up watching uh, their, their church's service at the uh, 1230 service. So we kind of did church in the living room after brunch. Yeah. It was real good. Well, I will be certainly glad to get back to our lives <laughs> for yeah. certain. I mean, no I think I'm a little over it. Are you more of an introvert or an extrovert? You know, I, so more introverted in the sense that the being around people empties the tank. Yeah. Being by myself fills the tank. Right. But I love being around people and I love doing stuff. So that's, what I figured. that's why I was on the phone. Yeah. I didn't want to call it. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, it's super, super close on the line. So for me, I, I, I'm so blessed that I can come to the office just yeah. to like change the atmosphere and get around people and hang out and talk. Because yeah. as soon as I get home on Friday, I suddenly feel instantly trapped. Like, yeah. I, can't, I can't go anywhere. <laughs> and do. I used to just like, waste an entire Saturday watching Netflix right. and not think twice about it. And now it's like, well, get me out of here. here. Talking about Netflix, I have to ask you, you know what I'm going to ask, right? Have you watched Tiger King? I've watched most of <laughs> Tiger King. I've not finished it yet. Hurry up and finish. Um, oh, it is just next level crazy. Oh my goodness. We I, like, people like this exist. People. I know we would have never known had it not been for COVID-19 because how many people would have just wow. watched that? Nobody. <laughs> I don't how's know your, if I watched it. <laughs> so here's a question for you. How, yeah. How's your TikTok doing? Oh my God. I TikTok? I've been trying to take TikTok lessons because I don't quite understand it. Um, right. And I don't know, like I'm really techie, like pretty techie. And I just, yeah. can't, I just can't dig it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Oh man! Do you have a TikTok out there? I, I, you know, I, I have. It you. exists. It exists, but I don't post anything. <laughs> it's like all my friends are like, "You need to get on TikTok. You make some videos." And I'm like, "Guys, I can't. I just no, I can't." No, we're I in can't. the same boat. Mine exists, but I am gonna add you just in case. You know, like do it. I have you some fun fitness videos in the office that we all need to see. <laughs> yeah, that see because I my my brain thinks TikTok is dancing, and I'm a yes, terrible yeah. dancer. Especially when it has to be choreographed. So <laughs> I'll have to come up with something else. That's my thing. <laughs> I True. love it. Well, can you tell everybody if they wanted to get in contact with you, if people wanted to reach out and work with you um, on their credit, where would they be able to find yeah. you? Yeah. So email is r.anderson at white, like the color, jacobs with an S dot com. Shoot me an email there. Uh, you can catch me direct at 469 six eight seven nine five three five um okay. and if, if you're like hey you know i don't think anything's wrong with my credit i just want it better i love that conversation okay. um if, if if it's hey my credit is you know a dumpster fire and i don't <laughs> think there's anything that can be done 
we'll we'll take care of you. It's okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, people it, all the way from tips and tricks to total overhaul. I want to be able to help the best I can. So. Okay. Well, I appreciate you being on the show. We'll actually put your information in there. I'm going to make sure one more time just to check and see uh, if we had any questions. Okay. So, um, okay. So, oh yeah, we do. Okay. So let's talk about this. Um, yeah. One of the things he, uh, this is a question from Travis Wright, one of my favorite mortgage um, guys, and I work with him a lot and he's always done really well for me. Um, one thing we often see in the mortgage world are medical collections. It definitely yeah. has a negative impact on the credit score, even with the small dollar amount. Any advice on how to deal with those? Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's so crazy because I know so mortgage works with FICO's two, four, and five. Mm -hmm. So that's an older version of FICO where those numbers correspond specifically to the bureaus they're pulling info from. And the reason mortgage companies use it is because it provides the most information. On FICO 8, collections under $100, uh, under $100 don't, don't really factor into the score at all anymore. Unfortunately, on the old ones, they do, even if it's a zero balance. So wow. with medical stuff, um, the, we actually have medical collections are our highest deletion rate item. That really? we see. And the reason for that is because first, you know, so we don't do a standard dispute. I know a lot of people are familiar, familiar with disputing. Yeah. Um, because of the law firm that we have, we do what's called an audit where we are forcing these companies to present all the documentation required according to fair credit reporting, blah, 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 all that stuff. Okay. Um, when it comes to medical collections, there are so many hoops that they have to jump through in order to put that information on a credit report that 99 out of 100 times, they have missed the mark somewhere. So okay. we usually either get them on the Fair Credit Reporting Act, um, meaning they just don't have the documentation required or they don't respond in the right amount of time. Okay. Or let's say they're the one out of 100 that actually has all that documentation. We then follow up with the HIPAA Act and they have to prove how they have not violated HIPAA as far as that information okay. being confidential. So oh, that's, okay. if, we, if we don't get them on the front end, we almost always get them on the back end. Um, so, but that's the amazing. as far as how to handle those things, if you were trying to do it on your own, you're going to run into the same problem of paying those, damaging the credit further, um, okay. because the older the the mortgage versions of FICO, will, when it comes to a collection, they only read two pieces of information: one, the type of account, which is a collection. Okay. And then the date of last activity, which is the last time you interacted with the balance on that collection. So if you had a $5,000 collection that's five years old and you pay it down to a zero balance today, your scores will drop because the algorithm doesn't see the 5,000 becoming zero. It sees a five-year-old collection becoming a day old. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. See, that's why you guys, you need, you need somebody who knows. So make yeah. sure that you uh, reach out to Riley if you have those questions. He is a wealth of information, but not only that, he is a very honest guy and he's very encouraging. So reach out to him. But Riley, thank you so much for doing this. Maybe I'll get to yeah. see you soon in Carolina's, you know, I when we all that. get together. Come on, <laughs> Soon, soon, soon. But thank you for being on Candidly COVID. You guys stay tuned. We've got some really great shoes, shows for the next upcoming shows. I mean, I'm so excited. There's so many people that I wanted to have on the show. If you are a business owner that is dealing in candid, um, like in this time that we're dealing with COVID, I'd love to hear your stories, um, how you're helping the community, how your business is doing. We really want to know how you guys are doing and even so how we can help. So you guys, there's more Kindly COVID to come. Thank you for everybody who's been watching. And Riley, thank you so much. And we will see you soon. Thank Bye, guys. you. See you guys.